a roubar Porque no fim eu sei que vou tirar Fala tchau pro seu batom na boca E fala pra quem te faz pirar Se você já tá com a mesma sensação Pode vir, gente, que eu tô um bugão Tá descontrolada toda essa tara E não para porque a coisa ficou mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço No cansaço, no cansaço Vamos fazer um regaço, um regaço, um regaço Bolarinha dos amassos, amassos, amassos Vamos fazer um regaço, um regaço, um regaço Seu batom na boca E fala oi pra quem te faz pirar Se você já tá com a mesma sensação Pode vir, gente, que eu tô um bugão Tá descontrolada toda essa tara E não para porque a coisa fica mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço No cansaço, no cansaço Vamos fazer um rei The views, opinions, and representations expressed on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network and its website are those of the hosts, guests, and participants, and are not necessarily those of or endorsed by the network, its affiliated stations and broadcasts, the management, other hosts, or advertisers of the network. The shows found on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network can, but do not necessarily, promote any particular lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practice. These shows are for entertainment purposes only and are not intended to treat, diagnose, and or claim any cure of disease or condition or give any medical or legal advice. You're listening to my friend Gary Anderson on My Dreams Talk Radio, the best in paranormal radio. Now, John, I keep telling you, night after night, not the best, but not the worst, somewhere in between, I guess. Well, good morning, good evening, depending on your time zone. From your area to my area worldwide, you're listening to me, Gary Anderson, on Night Dreams Talk Radio. Tonight, you want to get yourself a nice cup of java, maybe some hot cocoa, maybe even some popcorn and curl up next to that fireplace. Because tonight, we got a great guest on. We got Earl Gray. He is a MUFON investigator, plus <laughs> he plays music like you wouldn't believe. He'll be on right after this. Please check out the Night Dreams Talk Radio website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. Also, if you want to keep our show free of advertising, just hit the donate button. Give a buck or two. Remember, all prior shows are always free to listen to. We at Night Dreams Talk Radio thank you for your support. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network, from our compound to you worldwide, with your host, Gary Anderson. Well, that is me. Today has been a kind of an exciting day. We have a little mini farm. You know, we had some mini horses, uh, mini goats. One of the goats decided to get out of its pen and took off down the road a ways. I'll tell you one thing. It's not fun catching a male goat with horns and trying to coax it back onto the property. I'll tell you, that was like three hours. And then about two hours to fix where it came out through the electric fence. I don't know. I'm getting too old for this. Anyway, tonight we're going to be talking some interesting things uh, about uh, MUFON uh, with Earl Gray. We're going to talk about what it's like to be an investigator with MUFON. And plus, he has an exciting story about his mom being involved uh, with Howard Hughes. As you know, one of our other guests back here a few months ago, uh, his grandfather actually was the head mechanic uh, for the aviation side 
uh, and was really close friends with Howard Hughes. And Howard uh, Hughes donated a lot of money for, uh, for Red Rock where he could actually start his little thing for UFO encounters. Hey, Earl, how you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing good, Gary. How are you doing? Uh, well, I'm going to be sore by tomorrow. I can tell you that. <laughs> you were telling me a little bit about your goat encounter uh, before we got on here. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they're they're interesting animals. You don't want to turn your back on them if you have, like, a cat in your pocket or something. You, you will lose your hat. That will be the goat's dinner, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like two other things. If you own a motorcycle and it gets out and goes into your little man cave, it, they love eating the seats on a motorcycle. I can tell you that. But, no, what I was telling you about uh, before we went on the air, yeah, I understand. You do never want to turn your back to a goat, especially when they have yeah. horns. Because I'll tell you what, if you do, you might have trouble sitting down like I am right now. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> El Toro. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I My voice went from a low voice to a high pitch really quick. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, Earl, and what got you into MUFON, what got you interested in UFOs, and also, I hear you play a mean guitar. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, it's a big pool with a lot of fish in it here in Los Angeles, California, and that's uh, I, I'm a Los Angeles native here. Um, and I, I've been a, a field investigator for MUFON for four years now. And uh, what, what led me to it, it was kind of a lifelong uh, trail that uh, started when I was a kid. But uh, first I'll tell you a little bit about what I, what I do for MUFON. I am actually the uh, assistant state director for Southern uh, California here for MUFON. And uh, I'm their chief investigator, and I'm also a member of Kathleen Marden's Experiencer Research Team. So uh, at any given time, I usually have about 30 cases that are active that I'm working on. And, uh, and that's just from my regular, you know, MUFON UFO load. Um, uh, along with that, I, I have uh, cases that come in daily from the, ex- from the Experiencer Research Team you know, where I get to speak with people who've had alien contact. And we're finding that there's a lot to glean and a lot to learn from these people. But, uh, you know, you can see a vehicle, and it's always just a very, very exciting thing. And, you know, some of the cases that I get, you know, have my jaw on the floor. But it's the people that meet those that are controlling the vehicles that uh, we are learning so much from. And, uh, you know, it's the difference between perusing a race car and talking to the race driver, I guess, you know. So I, I'm very busy with what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, it sounds like it. Least. It sounds like it. Can I ask you a question, Earl? You know, I, sure. I had a, well, for a long time, we had Peter Davenport coming on one of our shows that uh, ran on my network that I have. Uh, he was coming on every weekend, uh, and uh, the, he said that he's been getting a lot more encounters, reports of aliens on the ground, and he's getting this all over from Canada, all over the United States. Have you been noticing anything more uh, or anything more of uh, alien contact on the ground than normal in the past maybe six months? I'm not sure if people are just more comfortable sharing about their encounters now than they were before. Um, It it seems just, you know, with everything that's sort of ramped up over the last couple of years, uh, you know, with the, with the, the USS Nimitz affair that happened off of Catalina Island here in 2004, you know, that uh, the New York times put that on, it was a front page story back in uh, September, 2017, I believe. Uh, and, and it just seems like it's, it's not that if you talk about this, that you aren't suddenly shuffled off into the crazy bin, like you used to to be in people's minds. Uh Um, people are, are interested in hearing about, about personal encounters. And I think that they're more apt to listen when, uh, especially because, you know, it's like working with the experience or research team, the ERT over at MUFON, uh, out of our three, I think we have 33 members now that are all taking phone calls from people and talking with people. And, and, 
most of them are, are doctors or, or scientists or, or uh, you know, psychologists. I mean, most of the people have a, a background in, in the sciences. And uh, so it's not, it, it seems like it's becoming more accepted out there for people to talk about their encounters. And you know, anybody that's listening out there, that if you have had an encounter, if you've had, you know, the little gray guys come and visit you in your room uh, where you can't move, and, and, and if it's happened once or if it's a recurring thing, uh, you can actually find the, um, the Experience Your Research Team questionnaire at uh, MUFON.com. It's very easy to fill out. It'll take you about five minutes max. And uh, somebody will get a hold of you regionally. We usually try to get somebody who's regional to you to take the report. Um, if you're in California, you'll probably get me. Interesting. Um, but we do want to hear the stories. Uh, we find a lot of markers in common with different people. Seems like the phenomena is not a respecter of persons. You know, it's, we, we have people from all walks of life. and uh, But you can see repeating patterns. And there are certain things that we withhold from the public in general for that specific purpose. So that when you fill out the questionnaire, there are certain questions that you'll you'll be asked there that uh, are not that well known uh, out in the general public about uh, encounters that people have. Whether you feel that you've been visited or taken, um, there, there are certain markers that, that we see. And we're, we're learning a lot about the phenomenon. And, uh, and we're also able to, if, if you need a support group or if you want to be hypnotically regressed, which has its good parts and its bad parts, I'll tell you, you know, it's one of those things where you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube if, if you are hypnotically regressed. But some people, they, they, you know, you'll have screen memories that you're left after an encounter and people want to uh, retrieve those. And it is possible to retrieve those. Uh, Bud Hopkins kind of, kind of uh, originally was the person who forged through that field. Uh, John Mack and and other people. But uh, we do have a list of of uh, certified hypnotic therapists that you can go to, and that uh, will help you with that. But mostly, you know, people just like to tell their their stories. They like to have a non judgmental person to listen to them, and that's what we're there for. You know, it's more than anything to, to learn more about the phenomenon itself and to give people support that are going through this. Because it can be quite traumatic, Holy, you know, as you could imagine. It can be. You know, some of the, the, the experiences I've had with guests, and I actually had a guest that was going to come on my show. He is a police sergeant in Portland. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, that was going to come on my show. Because last year, him and his wife were out camping. They were up by Tillamook, Oregon. And they encountered two uh, aliens on the ground walking or, and he spotted it first. He told his wife, she turned her head and saw it and poof, they were gone. And he wanted to come on and, and talk about it. But then after a while he got, you know, cold feet, he didn't want to do it. But about a week after that, you know, Peter Davenport comes on the show and starts talking about all these people seeing these aliens walking on uh, the side of the road. Now he was getting these reports all across the uh, Canada and the United States and it seemed like it was a period of time last year that, uh, well, there was more reported uh, reported uh, encounters with aliens on the ground than normal. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we do. I just closed a case uh, this week uh, that I was working on for about seven, eight months, uh, just gathering evidence. It's a recurring. Uh, a woman who's been having recurring visits since she was a child and her mother originally saw what she thought were ghosts, but they were, they were kind of the proverbial gray aliens that were standing outside of a car, quote unquote, <laughs> you know, they, they use screen memories. Uh, I, I'm wondering, it probably wasn't a car that was actually there, but she drove past and it was this thing. It just stuck out in her mind. And after that happened, uh, her little three-year-old daughter, uh, had this experience where she woke the parents up and said, so there was this house that was standing in our front yard and I was floated out the window into this <laughs> house. 